Hey guys, this is Jeff and I'm Vanessa with Our World Our Way, hashtag Allow 2017. Alright, so we decided to gather ourselves here today to offer you our third part in our travel series, uh, which we're going to be talking about basically how to save money while you're, while you're already on the road, while you're already traveling. So. Here we are today, we're going to just break that down to you in about 25 different points that can certainly help you while you're on the road. So, Vanessa, you want to get started? Okay, all right. Well, the first thing that we can tell you is that when you are traveling, when you're planning and you're already on the road or what have you, look for free things to do. Yeah. My favorite thing to say is free 99. Free night enough. I love that. <laughs> I'm there for my brother. Yeah. Um, so you're going to look for free activities that you can do. That way, you don't necessarily have to spend all your money when you're doing your traveling, you know, on different activities and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you can do a self guided, guided tour. Um, look for things, museums that don't charge you to come in. Yeah. In a lot of the cities that we go to, depending on the day of the week or the day of the month, a lot of times the last Sunday of the month is free. So. Accordingly. Yeah, just do the research and plan accordingly, like she said. Uh, certainly, you want to take advantage of the free walking tours that are mm -hmm. out there as well. Free, free, free. Do yeah. the free stuff first. Yeah. Right? Almost every city has a free walking tour, and you know, you just took what you think is fair. Exactly. Number two, what you want to do, you want to try to book accommodations, right? Mm -hmm. That has uh, a refrigerator, a microwave, and a kitchen. If possible. If possible. But you, you certainly want that because you want to be able to cook your own food. You save tons of money when you do that, right? Yeah, even if you're just making sandwiches, trust me, having a refrigerator and a microwave definitely will help you save money. Well, we know that might not sound sexy to some of y'all out there. <laughs> but you can also, you know, kind of like, you know, keep your weight down as well and uh, save money in the process. And let's face it, who needs to eat out every single day anyway? Exactly. Number three. Number three, Vanessa. Uh, shop at local markets. Mm -hmm. Avoid big box stores. In every city that you go to, more often than not, you're going to find like a regular grocery store. Look for the mom and pop shops. Look for the places where they have like uh, on the corner vegetable stands and things like that. Yes, yes, I agree with that. And then you're also giving back to the community when you do that as well. So, exactly. Yeah. And before, you want to make sure that you research transportation costs before you book your accommodations. Right. Can't tell you how many times people have uh, booked accommodations that are way far out of the area that they want to explore. Mm -hmm. And they end up spending all their money on taxis and Ubers, yeah. and, you know, just to get into the main part of the city to, 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 to really kind of see and get a feel for what the city is like. So make sure you do your research and uh, and only from your transportation costs beforehand. It has to balance out. Yeah. And you also want to make sure that if you do in fact book something that's outside of the city, make sure they have local uh, transportation buses. Yeah. Exactly. Saving a lot of money using local transportation. Agreed. All right, number five, carry snacks and water with you when you go out and about. Uh, yeah. You may go to like a local store and get a bottle of water for 50 cents, but then when you go on your excursion, they charge you $3 for a bottle of water. I'm telling you. you. Know, yeah. This comes in handy. Having your own bottle that you can fill up for yourself comes in handy when you're traveling. Exactly. Snacks, all those good things. Mm -hmm. Pack that stuff before you go out, whether it's going to Machu Picchu, whether it's going over in Mexico now, Chichen Itza, you know, you want to make sure that you have your stuff uh, in tow. And even if you're locally, going to the zoo or something like that, pack some snacks so you're not so tempted to buy stuff when you get done. Sandwiches, you name it, yeah. Uh, what else? Number six? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really important. You want to make sure that you use, like if, if many of you have jobs right now, right, and your job may send you out um, traveling for work, well, you know what, guess what? That's and, and that's a huge advantage to you because what you can do is you can start racking up your points, your miles, your hotel points, your 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 frequent flyer miles for travel. Mm -hmm. You know, just just conserve that and use it. We use it for special occasions because we, you know, Vanessa and I both traveled um, for years through our jobs uh, in corporate America. And that 
was primarily what we did. We traveled like 90 plus percent of the time. And so we were able to sort of um, rack up a lot of points and, uh, and uh, mileage in regards to that. So, so yeah, you want to make sure that you do that. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't just use them all the time because then, of course, you know, they'll, they'll deplete your bank. <laughs> You want to, you know, save those things up for, you know, special occasions or whatnot, but it certainly can help you save them. Yes, and you also get points from the board's credit card, so keep that um, in mind as well. Yeah. Um, look for city tourism cards. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the card, you can get free, visitors can get free entrance into different uh, attractions around the city, uh, discounts in restaurants, discounts on museum enter, uh, entrances. Uh, they also have some skip the line options at busy places. Yeah. So look for the city tourism cards when you do before you go to know yeah. if they have that available. And if so, check the dates and make sure it's going to be something that you can use when you're there. I totally agree. And some of those tourism cards they would include uh, public transportation costs along with the entrance to museums and mm -hmm. and, and different uh, touristic sites. So that is that is definitely definitely key. Number eight. Number eight. You know what? This is this is really important for us <laughs> because our motto when we travel is that we're not gonna spend all of our time in our hotel room or in our cabin if we're booking a cruise. It's not it's not important for us, you know, to always get the best room or a veranda suite. <laughs> you know, I mean, because you know we're not gonna spend most of our time there. We're gonna be out. You know, seeing the places and different um, sites that we want to see, but for some people that's important. So if it's not important, if it's not like you know a deal breaker for you, get cheap, get the cheap room. Yeah, get the cheapest option uh, for your accommodations, and you'll save a ton of money on that. You know, how much time are you actually going to spend? Exactly. In the room anyway. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Um, number nine: be flexible when flying. Mm. Um, one of the things that we can point out to you is when you're booking a flight, all too often there are an option. There's an option for you to check seven days before, or seven days after. Look at the calendar when you're booking to be sure that you're getting the the, the best rate. Because depending on the airline, in a lot of cases, it costs more to fly on one day versus the other. That's true. I mean, it could be a difference of two hundred dollars. <laughs> on a flight, if you're, you know, dead set on leaving on a Friday, trust me, you are going to pay more money. Yeah. But if you could leave on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, yeah. a lot of times the option is better. And I don't know about you, but I can use it extra $200. Hey, hello. <laughs> hello, somebody. Yeah. So remember, be flexible. Be flexible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10 is important because uh, one of the things about saving is that you want Oftentimes what you end up doing is you end up paying for location. Location is very important when it comes to accommodations. And sometimes it's cheaper to stay away from the primary uh, location of a particular destination. Um, I tell you one, one thing, they, the tourists, they get us all the time with that, you know? Sometimes you can cut costs. Uh, in half if you stay a little bit further out away from the main center and just, you know, take your public transportation into the city center to see the touristic things that you want to see. So staying outside of the city can sometimes be to your benefit versus your detriment. But the thing that you want to do when you do that, you want to make sure that you research what the public transportation cost will be for your duration of your stay. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, number eleven. Rent an apartment. Rent an apartment instead of getting two rooms. Uh -huh. We have a lot of friends who uh, like to either travel together, and we also have friends who travel with children. Yeah. And in some cases, they <clears throat> can rent a, a, go to a hotel and rent a two room suite. Well, and you'd be surprised to find that in a lot of cases you can find. An apartment that costs less than the cost of two rooms. Yeah, okay. okay. So check on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. uh, we also like to use uh, VRBO as well as HomeAway and Booking.com. Yeah. And all of those uh, on all of those websites, they do have an option for you to search just apartments or entire homes. 
because we have found in a lot of cases renting an entire apartment costs less than renting a private room in yeah. a hotel or a hostel. One night, yeah. So. Okay, Agreed. 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 Uh, number 12, I think we talked about this in our first video within the series. We, we actually talked about what's called the shoulder season. Well, there's an off season too. So traveling during the off season can certainly save you a ton of money. Shoulder season versus off season are two different things, but it's cheaper in terms of your flights. So if you're traveling by, by plane, you can get cheaper plane tickets as well as hotel rooms and, and, uh, and lodging and accommodations. So, Traveling during the off season mm -hmm. can, uh, can save you tons and tons uh, of money. Plus, there's more availability. Yes. Yeah. Hotels, cars, flights, all of that. Yeah, you don't have to all the crowds, they won't be there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, number 13. <clears throat> you know that breakfast is the most important part of the day. Yeah. Part of the day. Yeah. Have a big breakfast or a big lunch or brunch, uh, brunch before you leave. To go out and venture out. Yeah. You know, something that is heavy in protein will help satiate you and carry you through the day so you don't spend so much money on food when you go out to where you're going. Yeah. Um, you can also buy food or lunch uh, and save it for dinner. For example, what we like to do is split a meal when we're <laughs> out. Or yeah. if we eat dinner at a restaurant the night before, we automatically get a to go box and save the other half of that meal for the next day. Save money that way. Yeah, yeah, never hurts. All right, number 14. Do not, and I repeat, do not eat in touristic areas of the destination in which you're going to. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be upwards of 50, maybe upwards of 50 to 75% more expensive than it would be eating in a local area uh, uh, of your trip. So save a few bucks. And do what the locals do. Eat where they eat. Find out where they eat. Find out what they're eating, what they're drinking, and just and just kind of follow suit, follow in line with that. When you do that, trust and believe that you will save a lot of money while you're on the road. Now, if you are forced to eat in a touristic area because that's where you are and you don't really have transportation, mm -hmm. go a little further away from the restaurants in that one particular area. Yeah, go to Just a house. few streets away yep. could mean a huge difference in the amount that you're going to pay. Very true. And the selections that you get. Exactly, exactly. All right, number 15. Create a budget and skip, stick to it. Yeah. We actually use an app that we found called Every Dollar. Mm -hmm. And we actually put our monthly budget in there, everything, accommodations, transportation, yes. food, all of that. And it actually helps keep you honest as far as how much money you're spending because you have that in your head. <laughs> so my advice to you is figure out exactly how much you want to spend. If this is a vacation, how much is your total vacation budget? And divide that by how many days you're going to be gone. And that way you know, for example, if your budget is $50 a day, you know you can't eat at that restaurant where it's 50 bucks each person to eat <laughs> because it's gonna ruin your budget. Yes. So find a budget, create a budget, and actually stick to, to it. it. It's gonna make all the difference in the world. And remember, for every day you go under budget, you got a little bit left extra when you leave, when you go home. Nobody wants to come home for <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> I want to come back home with a surplus. Yes, <laughs> so we, will, we are going to do a separate uh, video and vlog uh, around the discipline for creating a comprehensive budget. Yeah, it's important because I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you don't know how to manage your finances now, like while you are on the road, that's not good. It, it, it's, it's actually to your detriment to get out there and start traveling, especially if you're, if you're looking at doing it the way we're doing it right. versus, you know, vacations or what have you. But if you're looking to do it the way we're doing it and then you get on the road and, and, and you, you don't have it, it. been disciplined with a budget beforehand, man. Those numbers add up quickly. Yeah. So, so we, we have a certain amount that we know that we're going to spend in the entire year. Uh -huh. So we divide that by the entire number of days. Yep. So we try to stick to... Our budget is basically $33 a day. And that's including food, transportation, accommodation, everything. $33 yep. a day is what we try to stick to. Yep. Now, there's some days that we go under, over, and some, some days, days we go over. Exactly. But, but it balances out. That's the balance out. Exactly. Exactly. So, 
Um, Vanessa, I don't know, did you mention this earlier about the every dollar app? Every dollar app. Yes. yes. Every dollar app. It's a free app. app. You know yeah. me. Free 99. <laughs> free 99. Yeah. yeah. But it's in the, uh, I know for sure it's in the Apple um, App Store. I don't know about Android, but it's definitely in the App Store there. It's a free app and it works so well. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll have, like you said, we'll have to do a separate blog and blog uh, about, uh, you know, budgeting budgeting, and uh, really offer you guys like a, I guess, a comprehensive guide to sort of teach you, you know, um, how to manage your, your finances while you're on the road. So we'll do that in the century. Because we can talk all day, I can talk all day about money yes. and, and financing <laughs> and budgeting. Yeah. Uh, number, number 16, number 16, uh, stay cheap. <laughs> Stay cheap. I mean, honestly, you know, it will require you to have some what we call lifestyle changes. But uh, yeah, stay, stay cheap. Stay under ra radar. You know, um, it's going to help you save money. You know, for travel. So why change it when you travel? Right. Stay cheap. Stay cheap. Yep. Every money, every dollar saved is a dollar earned. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Uh, number seventeen. <clears throat> Walk. <laughs> okay, walk. What we try to do is, if if the if where we're going is say less than three miles away, yeah, we'll walk at least one way. Mm -hmm. Walk. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's that's another reason why you want to stay in places that are that have public transportation, but also have safe roads. That way, if you have an opportunity to walk somewhere, you can. Yeah. You know, where we're living right now, we are. What a 10 15 minute walk from a grocery store in either direction. Yep. We made sure of that. That way, when we got here, we didn't have to worry about having a car. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, we try to walk anything that's less than an hour away. We try to walk it at least one way. Yep. If it's 30 minutes away, we're walking, we're just going to walk. We, yep. we need to exercise anyway. Yep. Um, Google Maps allows you to pinpoint a destination. Yep. Yeah. And actually download the map to your phone. So if you don't want to use your cell data, you'll have that map and you'll be able to get directions while you're out and about without having to worry about using the data. Agreed, agreed. You can download these maps. Uh, I think it's map.me. Maps with an S. Maps dot me. Dot me. Yes. You can download uh, uh, maps about a particular country or location that you're in uh, while you're on Wi Fi. And so when you're out and about, you know, you can pull it up without having internet connection. So exactly. that's another good. Which is great when you're driving and you don't because I mean, who prints off the records anymore? Exactly. So you know, if you want to explore a new destination when you first get there, walking is the way to do that. Right. All right. Number number eighteen. Number yeah. Number, I'm sorry. Number nineteen. Number nineteen. Volunteering. Volunteering. Volunteering while you are uh, abroad. Like that's another way for you to sort of uh, sort of save save money. Mm -hmm. uh, volunteering while you're abroad, we did it. <laughs> yes, we, we did, did it. it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. And we did an excellent job at it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, um, when we started this journey, we really really did it to uh, to sort of pay it forward, give it back, mm -hmm. because we, we've been tremendously blessed throughout our lives. Right. Right? Great jobs, great careers, and so that was one of the things that we wanted to do when we first started out. And so, yeah, volunteering abroad can help you save money. There are several different platforms that you can use to do that. Um, some of them include that Verbo, B-I-V-E-R-B-O.com. We'll make sure that we put all these different sites that we're giving you guys uh, in the end of the credits, but diverbal.com is a good resource that you can mm -hmm. uh, you can use to find volunteer gigs abroad. Um, go overseas.com. Uh, that's how we ended up finding out about English Opens Door. We spent four and a half months, almost five months in Chile, teaching uh, English abroad in Chile. So it, basically, that's it gives you a free vacation right while you're traveling, and there are so. Volunteer some of your time. Oh yeah, in right. exchange for that. What what accommodations? Accommodations are taken care of. Some of them even include like you know a stipend um, for food, a stipend for food or food itself. So so yeah, many many volunteer opportunities are abroad that will provide you with that. But yeah, we eight out of the twelve months in our first year of travel we did that. So and we and eight out of the twelve months while we traveled we did not pay for a place to live. Nope. 
Nope. Volunteerism. Volunteerism. So World Packers is a good uh, website that you can find some of those uh, volunteer opportunities. Uh, work away, Helpex, and even uh, Woofing. Woofing uh, is another one. So, so yeah, volunteering abroad. That was number, I said number 19, but I believe that was number 18. Right? So yeah, number 18, volunteering. Yeah. Okay, so number 19. All right, got to find a way to get money. Okay. Get money. <laughs> I keep thinking about get money. money. Yeah. Let's face it, you do not want to have to dip into your savings to travel no. um, if you can help it. Yeah. Um, the best way to get money while you work, the best thing to get, the best way to get money is to work while you're traveling. Especially if you're traveling the way that we are. Yeah. You know, money just doesn't come out of the sky. No. So if your goal to, is to travel long term, you have to find a way to work while you're traveling. Uh, there are plenty of jobs that allow you to stay um, abroad and teach a lot. One of those is teaching English. Yeah. Teaching English, if you're a natural English speaker, uh, you can work with uh, co online companies um, like Lingoda, Prefly, yeah. places like that. They could pay upwards in the amount of $23 an hour in some cases, yeah. at the very least, maybe $8 to $10 an hour. Yeah, VIP um, Kid is another. Yeah. Dada is another one. You know, there are different places that you can uh, find online to teach. Yeah. Um, we all have our own unique gifts and talents, and you need to take those gifts and talents and turn them into something that's profitable. Yes. For you. Um, Upwork. Yeah. Com, freelancer. Freelancer.com. Yeah, freelancing. Freelancer gifts. Freelancer.com allows you to bid for gifts. If you are a graphic designer or your personal assistant or anything that you can do online, mm -hmm. you can find a way of doing it while you're traveling abroad. Photography, stock photography. There are so many different ways in which you can earn money, but yeah. So um, there's different things, graphic design, coding, writing, editing, photography, yeah. uh, website building, places like Fiverr, hire graphic artists to to uh, do logos and websites along with other things that you can do with that, with that company. Peopleperhour.com will help you find your travels as well. Yeah. Um, they pay you for your services. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all about making that money. Yeah. If you speak multiple languages, you can translate. Mm -hmm. So translating services, offer your services in that regard. Right. Yep. If you love visiting websites, yep. like we all love to surf the web, there are companies that will pay you <laughs> to visit different websites, and they can pay you up to ten bucks for each review you create. Yep. Online. Um, yep. Usertesting.com. Yeah. Usertesting.com is another uh, resource for you guys out there that are like web aficionados that mm -hmm. want to go out there and, and research our websites and you can give a review on that website and just get paid. And if you have a voice that could be heard on the radio, for example, like my lovely wife here has an amazing voice, <laughs> um, there are sites like voices.com and voiceworld.com yeah. where you can actually sign up to do voiceover work. Voiceover work is, is, is a good resource for, uh, for making money. Um, yeah, anything else? There's no. Do a little digging. Do a little digging. Yeah. 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 Do a little digging. Glassdoor is a good resource for you to find work. Um, if you are looking for like a corporate job or something like that that's remote, uh, Glassdoor is a very, very good resource for that. Um, what else? What else? What else? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Many people, they, they really downplay LinkedIn, but I'm telling you, LinkedIn is a great resource for people who are looking for work or just want to put it out there to the masses about what their gifts and their talents are, and they're looking for someone to hire them, uh, whether it's in freelancing or, or what have you, writing, photography, you name it. So, so yeah. All right. All right. Number 20? Number 20. Let's get through this. Number 20. Yeah. Know the rules. Very important. Know the rules. Knowledge is power, right? So make sure that you are reading the fine print on everything, especially when you're booking your accommodations and when you're booking your travel. Because I'm going to tell you, they will try to get you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah, train tickets, airline tickets, you know, uh, your stay, your lodging, your apartments that you're renting, you know, to avoid any extra costs, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you read the fine print. So, this is especially true when you're booking stuff. I can't tell you how many times, you know, uh, the airlines have tried to, 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 to get us, you know, for those baggage fees. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and you know you're thinking you're you're, you're booking a flight uh, with a particular um, level, 
that includes baggage, and then it turns out when you get to the checkout, oh no, this does not include baggage. Yeah. So read everything before booking anything. Yes. Yeah. And, and cancellations too. Cancellation fees. I want to point out one thing to you, especially when you are traveling abroad. If you use Airbnb, read the fine print, especially about the extra fees, because a lot of places, depending on the country you go in, will charge you extra if you go over on the electricity bill. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's another. This is huge in South America, especially because electricity costs a lot yeah, more in more Central and South America. So read, yeah. read. I can't even tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know the rules. All right, uh, travel insurance. Twenty one. Okay, number twenty one, travel insurance. Now you know we we all have booked vacations where they offer you travel insurance, and you know all too often you decline that thinking, hey, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. But you would be surprised at how inexpensive travel insurance can be, and how expensive it can be not to have it. Yeah. Okay, you could have an accident, your bags could get lost, your trip can be delayed. Take another look at your travel insurance that is offered through your vacation site, yeah. or you can actually go online and sign up for travel insurance. If your uh, medical insurance for home doesn't cover you, um, because in some cases, depending on the country you go to, your home insurance, if you have a good job, may not translate, may not go transfer over into a foreign country, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. um, we actually use a company called uh, Trayway. Trayway, Trayway International for our travel insurance. insurance. And it covers almost everything. So definitely you want to get that. Um, uh, you just want to be careful of all the different scenarios. It could be a natural disaster. Yeah, you can get sick and have to be airlifted back home. And you don't want to have to pay for that out of pocket. No, either. no. You know, the insurance will cover you while you're flying. Believe it or not, it's not as expensive as what most people would think. Yes, so it's I, actually really inexpensive. Yeah. I think we have a, a website that we can offer you guys that will show you all the different travel insurance companies that are out there mm -hmm. and give you a, a really a comprehensive list of, of their reviews and you can make the educated decision on your own from researching that website. So we'll make sure we put, I can't think of it right now, but we'll make sure we put that in the credits at the end okay. uh, for insurance purposes so that we can do that because that's how we ended up uh, going with Trade with International. So, so yeah. Yeah, based on their reviews and based on other people's uh, experiences with them. But yeah, travel insurance is important. All right, number 22. Number 2022. 20, um, you want to make sure that you delete your, your cookies and your history when you are searching for like, you know, whether it's uh, accommodations, whether it's airline or train tickets or what have you, because your cookies in your search engines, they will basically save that data and, you know, you'll end up having to, you'll find that the price is going to basically increase because of your search history. So you want to either go into incognito mode on your computer mm -hmm. while you're doing your research and you're searching for your flights and your accommodations uh, for your travel, uh, or you just want to clear out your cache, your cookies and your history. Uh, before you start that process. That's a, another way in which you can save a lot of money while you're traveling. Yeah. Another option, another thing that we would definitely advise you to do, and this is good to use, period, whether you're searching for travel or you're doing your monthly finances, if you're going to be searching online, use a VPN. Oh, yes, guys. Okay? VPN. Use a VPN. We use a company called ExpressVPN mm -hmm. exclusively. It is a fantastic VPN service, and it allows you to watch Netflix and Hulu. Yeah, why are you abroad? <laughs> Not all of them allow you to use that, no, but, but it's, 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 it's <clears throat> extremely important to use a VPN, especially when you're doing online banking. It puts you in sort of an incognito mode so people yeah. can't steal your information. Your ID, yeah, your credit card information, your PIN numbers, all that stuff that you use whenever you do your online banking online transactions. Yes, good point. Good, good save, and that's mm -hmm. very good. All right, number 23, mm -hmm. stay connected. Yeah. Don't land in a new country and not have a way of getting connected with everybody. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so here's the thing. A lot of times we go on vacation, and our instinct is first to go to our cell phone company and buy an international plan. Yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. 
use Wi-Fi whenever, turn your cell data off mm -hmm. and use Wi-Fi whenever possible. Because trust me, those international rates are ridiculously high. Exactly. Roaming, char roaming charges? Oh my goodness. Yes. If you have an unlocked cell phone, uh -huh. get a SIM card when you get to your next, get to that country. Yes. SIM cards in most countries are super inexpensive. I think the most expensive one we saw was for Europe was like $25 for the SIM card. Yeah. But in Peru, for example, it might be $2. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. And it includes some data. Yeah. So if you get a local SIM card, then you then you can do a prepaid plan and just put like five dollars on it or what have you, and that can last you for your whole trip. Yep. Versus getting home and finding out you have a three hundred dollar phone bill. Oh. Because you turned yourself <laughs> out to check Facebook. Yeah, you. we get that. Somebody get it. Yeah, we'll yeah, call yeah. Names. What happened again? <laughs> definitely, yeah. it's good to stay connected, but you don't want to do it at such a high cost. So try to stick to Wi-Fi. Almost everywhere you go, there's Wi-Fi. Even on Megabus, for example, there's Wi-Fi. Yep. On Amtrak in, in the States, there's Wi-Fi. Almost, I mean, we haven't been to a hotel yet that didn't have Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, even hostels have Wi-Fi. Wi Take advantage mm -hmm. of Wi-Fi whenever possible. Mm -hmm. It will not only save you money, but it definitely gives you a chance to research what you have um, when you're there and you don't have to use your Wi-Fi data when you leave the Agree. Number 24, you want to make sure that you, if you can, yeah, travel in a group. Save costs. Mm -hmm. Split the cost. Traveling in a group can be uh, very beneficial for you when you're trying to save while you're on the road. And it's also safety in numbers. Exactly. Yep. And you know, we have our, we're, we're planning our, our uh, 2019 uh, itinerary on our travel destinations. So we've invited you to come along with us, just inbox us and let us know, hey Jenna, hey Vanessa, you know, I want to travel with you guys, where you're going to be, I'd like to join up and meet up with you guys, traveling in a group will save you money, all right? All right, 25, mm -hmm. know where we're in the tricks of the trade when it comes to booking travel, whether it's lodging um, and accommodations or transportation to get to that destination. Yeah. There are so many sites. Mm -hmm. that you can go to to help you save money on booking your travel. And, and, and it's not what you think. It's not just the typical Expedia or yeah. CheapTickets.com or something like that. Yeah. There are some sites that are not as well known right. that we are going to give you links to those in the description box for the video here. Yeah. Um, Airbnb, for example, if you choose to use Airbnb, you can get up to $45 off your first rental. If you've never rented with Airbnb, you can get up to $45 off. And then once you sign up, they actually will allow you to have your own code so you can give people a discount and you get discounts in return. Exactly. So we have our link here in this embedded in this video that you can just click on and use when you're ready to book your first rental with Airbnb. Um, just check it out. But yeah, we can, we can actually give an entire uh, uh, video on this subject in terms of knowing uh, or learning all the tricks of the trade when it comes to booking your travel, whether it's your you know flight. We'll do that. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll do that we'll, in a separate we'll video. video. Yeah, or your accommodations, because trust me when I tell you, there is so much information in terms of the things that, the tricks that we use and we've learned uh, over this this, this 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 past year. Yeah. Well, not even this past year, before this past before year, this when we were traveling to work. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to make this video too long. We're going to go ahead and cut it. Right. And uh, you know, stand right there. But those are our top twenty-five. It's a lot tips. A lot yes. of tips. But our top twenty-five tips with teaching you how to save money while you are on the road traveling. So before we end, we want to make sure that we, uh, uh, you know, that you guys do us a solid. And that solid that we want you all to do is to follow, subscribe. We want you to love and to. Wow, this video, and make sure that you hit the share button. Share it, share the information, share it with your family, share it with your friends, share it with your followers, because remember, sharing is caring. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So, and we appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. Again, this is Jeff. And this is Vanessa. With our world, our way. Hashtag, oh wow, 2017. And uh, guys, always remember to do what? Live. Love, laugh, and thrive. Bye-bye.